Hey guys, Nick here from Gamertube, and welcome back to our Resident Evil 4 Remake What Will They Cut or Change Part 2. So in this video, we'll be going through the castle section of Resident Evil 4, and what Capcom may or may not keep or cut from the new remake. And I'll just add, these are all my own thoughts and opinions, and you are more than welcome to share your own thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. So you can tell us what you think Capcom will cut, or keep, or if they even need to touch the castle section at all. Alright, so let's get into the video. So first off, when Ashley and Leon come to the castle, we first encounter the Los Illuminados. Now will Capcom cut them? No, I don't think so, because they are one of the most prevalent enemies in the game. But do they need improvement and changes? Yes, I personally think they do. Now the Los Illuminados definitely have a lot of potential to be a really creepy enemy type in the new remake. And that's not to say the original Los Illuminados weren't creepy enough, but you know, once you've mowed down a couple of hundred, and they keep chanting that exact same catchphrase, they get a little bit comical near the end of the game. And from what we've seen from Resident Evil 8 so far, I do like the design of those cloaked shadowy women, and also the rumours we've been hearing about those tattooed pale skin enemies. They could be a really cool basis for the Los Illuminados remake, and what we're going to see for Resident Evil 4. They could really up the creepy atmosphere factor here by having them stick to the shadows and actually hearing them ever so slightly just whispering under their breath, planning their next attack when they're going to snatch up Ashley. Also for their outfit design, instead of going with such a regal clean look, you could go for more even dirty or like blood soaked robes, I think that would really up the creep factor here and make them have a little bit more creepy personality to them. So now for the different types of Luminados, and what I think they might keep in the remake. So we have the Archers, or the Crossbow Illuminados. Now it's a question if they would keep them or not, or maybe change the weapons. I don't think the Flame Arrow Crossbows are too far fetched, but I do think they are going to limit the amount of projectile weapons in the game, but I think maybe they'll just keep the arrows in. And then we have the Shield Bearing Illuminados. They do offer up some gameplay changes and some combat changes, and a little bit more of a challenge. Now will Capcom keep them into the remake? I honestly think they will, but they might change the design of the shields, maybe not to be such a big spiky in your face kind of design, maybe something a little bit more simple. As for the higher up Illuminados, and also the metal skull helmet wearing Illuminados, I do think they will also be included in the game, because they do offer a more challenging enemy to face, and also the fact that you can't get headshots with those metal skull heads. We then move into the sentient suits of armour. Now personally, I do think these enemies will get the chop from Capcom. That is to say if they still stick with the idea that these are unoccupied suits of armour with nothing inside of them. Now I don't know if they want to go that route with the unoccupied suits of armour. It reminds me a little bit too much of the Resident Evil 3.5 hallucination virus and I just think that's something they want to get away from. Now that's not to say that they can't do the suits of armour, but I think it would be much cooler if we did have some enemies in these suits of armours, or even like a Los Plagas enemy where you knock off the helmet and reveal a dangerous grotesque creature that could kill you in one hit. And look, maybe there is some deep lore as to what's inside of these suits of armour in the original game, and if you know that information, yeah, please share it down below, I'd like to hear it. But personally, I don't think they're going to make it into the remake. We now come to one of the more popular enemies, the Garador. Now Capcom should definitely include the Garador in the Resident Evil 4 remake. Now there's not a lot of changes I think they need to make here, just a slight redesign and obviously the HD'd up graphics, but I do think that they should rely on sound to see, and also the fact that their claws can get stuck in the wall and you can take your opportunity to take those pot shots at the Los Plagas on their back. Now I really do hope they recapture that terror of trying to desperately dodge the Garador's claws as it swings haphazardly trying to lop off your head. But yeah, in my opinion, the Garador stays, and I think Capcom can actually do some really cool things in their new Resident Evil 4 remake with this creature. We now come to one of the game's more important boss characters, Ramon Salazar. Now I think there's a good chance that Capcom will keep Salazar in the game. 
But as for the changes that Capcom may make, I do think Salazar does need quite a big redo and some changes to his character. Now instead of making him a pouty little brat, maybe they could actually add a little bit more sensibility to this character. And who knows, they might actually ditch the childlike appearance and make him more of an adult character. And yes, I am aware he was 20 years old in the original game, but they might go for a new character design that maybe is the same height and build as Leon. Also, for his personality and mannerisms, it would be interesting if they kind of adapted the personality traits of Alfred Ashford from Resident Evil Code Veronica. Someone who's as twisted and as narcissistic as Alfred, that could actually be an interesting character trait for Salazar. Now, let's get into the size of the castle itself. Now, the castle is a gigantic part of the game, and it's no secret that it does house some of the game's more cheesy and wacky elements. Now, personally, I do think a fair bit of the castle can be cut down to size, and that's not to say this will be cut content, but it will make room for more new and fresh content added to the game. Now, in its place, we could have new locations, or maybe even a more fleshed out version of the island towards the end of the game. So, I'll list off a couple of things that I think Capcom will most likely cut from the castle in the new Resident Evil 4 remake. So first off, in the beginning of the castle, we have the gigantic flaming catapults. Not only were they really annoying, but also I just don't think they really need to be in the remake. And then we have the giant fire-breathing dragon statue. Definitely one of the more wacky parts of the game, we have rotating carousels and lots of jumping and lava and fire everywhere, I just don't really think it suits the serious tone that the new games are setting. And at the very top of the cheesy and wacky pyramid that is Resident Evil 4, we have the giant walking Ramon Salazar statue. Now I just don't see Capcom putting this in their modern day remade game of Resident Evil 4. I feel like Resident Evil 2 had a much more serious tone, I just can't see Capcom adding in a gigantic puppet statue chasing after Leon and then diving out of the way just in time. And hey, if I'm wrong, I will gladly eat my words. But for the most part, I think we can say goodbye to the big Ramon Salazar statue. So moving away now from the castle, we come into another character, Salazar's right hand, aka the Verdugo. Now I definitely think the Verdugo will make it into the Resident Evil 4 remake. It's definitely an awesome looking creature to say the least, and I've always been a fan of its design. As for a redesign, there's not really much more you need to do to this character, I think it still looks pretty cool, although I wouldn't be opposed to a redesign. But something that I think does need to be changed is the boss battle. Now instead of a quick time heavy boss battle of ducking and throwing the canisters down, I'd actually like a boss battle that still kept the tight corridors, but more focused on you unloading bullet after bullet into the creature, and also maybe something that leads into an arena battle. But all in all, the Verdugo is definitely a creature I think should still be in the Resident Evil 4 remake, and I'm sure it's still going to lend a whole lot more tension and scares in the new game. Now lastly, we come to the end boss of Ramon Salazar at the end of the castle. Now this is definitely an epic boss battle, and one that I think Capcom should definitely keep in the remake. I've always liked the design of the creature that Salazar turns into, but I don't know if they're going to do a retweak of this, they might do a redesign, but who knows. For the most part, I don't think much really needs to happen to the battle, I think it just needs to be a gigantic creature and something that you need to fire your bullets at. It also makes me wonder if Capcom will actually keep the RPG in the Resident Evil 4 remake, and if it'll actually operate the same with a one-shot kill for any bosses or enemies. But all in all, this would be a really interesting and awesome boss to see return for the Resident Evil 4 remake. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for us today for our Resident Evil 4 What Will They Cut Part 2 video. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving a like, subscribing, and also comment down below what you think they will change for the castle segment on Resident Evil 4 Remake. A part 3 video containing the island and other bosses and the end boss will be coming out in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. But until the next one guys, I'll catch you later. Bye.